Uh, Simon, good to meet you. Let's start with your team news. Um, not too much time has passed since Sunday, but how's Jake Truman looking for Friday night? Um, he's looking good. He's looked really good for a few weeks now. So, um, actually, we haven't confirmed uh, fully yet. We're gonna have a, I'm gonna have a chat with Truman now after um, around how we use him, when we use him, and if we use him. That's all. Um, as we said, it's not something we want to rush, but. I'd say he's ready. We just have to have that chat and, and make sure he feels he's, he's where he needs to be to play. What will be the criteria that the pair of you talk about in terms of how you view his role on Friday night? It's how he's feeling is the is the biggest factor in that. Um, the other bits are quite easy to work out. Um, nothing I'll, I'll share with you, to be honest with you. But yeah, it's more just about how he's feeling about things. And are you still of the view that if he is ready, that he'll start this game? Not necessarily start the game. That again, that's part of that conversation we'll have. Um, you know, there are there's a school of thought around returning to play and playing certain minutes and, and such, and, and working out how that that can work for us. Um, and again, that's the part of that conversation. Uh, elsewhere, Tom Briscoe and Cameron Scott are they still both on track to come into the squad? Yeah, they're in the squad. Um, both trained really well today. I've had a good session. Good. Good session, a bit of a laugh as well out there, which is always good when the sun's out. So, again, we've got one more session together. They're definitely in the 21 and we'll, we'll work those combinations out later in the week. And also, have you got any other injuries that have cropped up coming out of the Leeds game on Sunday? Memories getting tested here. No, I think we're, I think we're okay. Mm -hmm. um, and then you spoke about Brad Fash saying he wasn't too far away. When are you currently targeting a return for him? As soon as possible, um, the same as his target. It'll be all again on how he feels. Um, I think he's not too far away. It's as I said in the last interview. I do think was he's at the back end of what we'd expected in terms of time, but it is what it is. We just get on with what we've got. Um, before we sort of look ahead and talk about everything else that's been going on this week, you've got the reserves in action on Saturday. You said last week that Jake Nottingham needed to do. A bit more. What would you like to see from him at the weekend in that regard? I wanted to see a greater, a greater impact uh, on the game. He did did okay in the last game, and he'd be the first to tell you he was all right. But it wasn't wasn't excellent or anything eye catching, if you like. I'm not expecting him to be chip chasing and doing all those little bits. But you know, we have we have traits for for our middle people that we need to see. For him to come back and play that role of us, same last week. Um, it was a step in the right direction, I think, for Jaden, the last one. So, yeah, he gets another crack at it this week. You've had a flurry of recruitment in the last week or so, but Richie Myler on Sunday speaking about the need to maybe take stock. So, what will happen over the next few weeks as you continue to address this squad moving forward? Um, I think. I think a lot. Of, I've heard it said a lot of times. Recruitment sort of never stops. You're always looking on the lookout, but. I think taking a step back from the whole situation we're in at the moment, I think across the league there's obviously a lot of loan movement going on but when you look or you speak about the game in general I think it's fair to say the pond is not as plentiful as it was in terms of the players we've got and um, the salary cap's gone through the roof in Australia so you're not getting as many coming across, across the water there so it's probably not the best time particularly this early in the season we're only a third of the way in um, to be trying to so, you know, to rejig your squad and move it around. So it's not timing's not great, um, but we keep working in the background to see if we can add to make us better, and with an eye on the now and, and an eye on the future as well. Could we see any more coming in in the next week or so? Ah, uh, you have to ask Rich on that one. I'm not sure. For the both of you as well, how much do you try? There's still a long-term project here in terms of the youth system and bringing players through that pathway. How do the both of you? Try not to avoid losing sight of that longer-term project. Yeah, that is a, a tricky one to sort of balance. Um, we need to. We're early days with this. Rich has only been. He's barely got his feet under the table. Um, but as a club, if we want to be bringing these kids through, which it was the aim six weeks ago, I'm sure it's still the aim now. Um, you know, we we need to back them uh, and have a plan for them, a pathway of, of how they progress and move forward to being starting players and that your recruitment is obviously involved in that if you recruit too heavily over the top someone you've got your VA backed for a spot it can be difficult for them to get there so we'll definitely well to my knowledge we'll definitely give in those lads everything they can 
um, you know, to reach their potential, which which is possibly playing for all I've seen Super League, if not somewhere else in Super League, hopefully. Um, but I'm sure they want to play for their own town club, the, the majority of them we have here. So there's obviously there's work to do in and around it and seeing how, how that jigsaw fits together, but there's certainly room to bring people in, but there's certainly room for those boys to stake a claim as well moving forward. Uh, interesting to hear from Richie as well, talking about the head coach vacancy and saying that he's in no immediate rush to go out and appoint someone. How much stability does that provide you with in the short term as you try and steer this ship around? Uh, probably not a lot because it could change. It's, things have been changing quite quickly at the club, obviously. Tony departing and other, other people have been mentioned for the job and they're not happening and so on. So I think, ask me next week and, and we'll see. Uh, but my, I came here to be a coach, I'm coaching, I'm on the field coaching and we're, we're getting on with it, as I say, um, and, and enjoying, enjoying our time. Um, we'll see how it goes in moving forward. But again, danger of repeating myself and sounding really boring, but it ain't going to be my choice at the end of the day anyway. So I've just got to keep doing what I'm doing and try to prep these lads best they can to get better each week. How much does it help you though that at least Richie's recognised the work that you've done in the last two weeks and that makes him feel for the time being that he doesn't have to hastily make an appointment? Oh, I don't know. Uh, he's been in and seen the work that goes in day to day. I think I said before that it wasn't, it wasn't one individual's fault. Obviously one man loses his job, but it wasn't his fault where the club's got itself to. Um, and there's a lot of good stuff going in the background, a lot of good people here. Yeah. So, yeah, Rich has obviously been in and seen that for himself, and that's probably helped him come to that decision. Rich also spoke about wanting to, as part of looking for a head coach, wanting to instill a particular a style on the team. Do you have the time and the ability to be able to do that, or is your work at the moment more short term focused about? You mentioned the improvements in defence that you're looking for at the moment. Yeah, it's a funny one, the style thing. Um, because you can watch Super League and you could argue everyone plays very, very similar. There's just little tweaks, which will vary from coach to coach. I've got my views on it. Um, they won't come out overnight. There's not something that you... Generally, it's a pre-season's worth of training and you start seeing some change. I think we've seen a little bit of change on the things we've, we've spoke around. I ain't getting to the technical detail of it, boy to death, but um, we have seen a bit of improvement there, but it's really early days on that front as well. And I think... You know, if it was me, anyone else coming in, they would really need a significant amount of time to impart that change and you know and apply any philosophy, if you like, um, that, that that person might have. So I think it's, it's a slow burner, regardless of who's doing it. Um, also, where Gareth Ellis returned into the club before the weekend, how has it been in the last few days having him around here? Good. Gareth's obviously a legend at club. Um, great player, great bloke. And... Obviously, they departed the club, started doing something a bit different, and then obviously a change of guard, if you like, and, and then Richie's working out ways he can make this club better. And having a legend like Gaz around, um, someone that's obviously synonymous with, with Hull FC, it can't be a bad thing. Um, at the moment, he's just helping wherever he's needed to try and help us um, stabilise the word you're using, sta stabilise, and, and get ourselves moving in the right direction again. Um, and where, where that leads in terms of his, his final role within the club, well, that's yet to be revealed, I suppose, to me anyway. Yeah, as you say, it's an evolving role within the performance department. What specifically is he helping you with at the moment? At the moment, anything and everything. We haven't got a big staff. We don't have tons of bodies. Um, and everyone here mucks in and, and adds to whichever area, whether it's taking the bibs home, washing them, which all the wives don't really like. But we, we all have to do it at the moment and until we work out how it's all going to look moving forward because... We don't want, as I say, on the player front, uh, making temporary solutions are not always the best ones, you know, longer term. So we're trying to just sort of richly gather the info and all of us, you know, get our heads around a table and, and work out what's best for us. How hard has he found this season watching on from afar in the first few months? Gaz, oh, yeah. you'd have to ask him, obviously. Uh, we haven't really got into that too much. I know he's watched the games recently and he's he has made comment of, you know, seeing a bit of a turn in the boys and, and the effort stuff, um, which as much as Gaz had some great um, qualities to his game, that was one of the um, the foundation, that was probably his, was his foundation, it should be everyone's, but he was very strong on those parts of the game. He, he, was, he was good at them, so he's been pleased to see those bits um, come through in our performances. And having that brief break from the club, how 
when he's come in and spoken about things, how much has that helped to offer a, a different perspective from someone having left that environment and then coming back in? Uh, it just, listen, he just seems energised and, and fresh. Um, obviously, he left, you know, the, he was coaching at the time, weren't sure what if that was his going to be his, his direction and he's gone and had a look at something else and you know sometimes a change is as good as a rest and he's definitely got that rest he comes back to us refreshed and again he's just trying to add in any way shape or form at the minute before the um, the path narrows I suppose to what's next. When you look back at Sunday's performance against Leeds right now just what do you feel is there in terms of a foundation that you can build on now going into these next few games? I thought we looked like a rugby team again. Um, the effort was good. I think we raised the bar even from the Saints game, the effort the effort areas, but I think we're starting to see a couple of changes start to bear a little bit of fruit in terms of how we we wanted talking about playing. But it's probably the the first time in a while that it looked like training. It looked like how we were prepared to play and we got a good share of the ball. So I think I mentioned last week around Frank. Um, seeing the better side of him if you get a good share of it and I thought we saw that at the weekend and we're giving ourselves something something to be proud of if you like although we're not happy we can't come in here every week and go oh we're proud of our effort because as much as that's great and we do want to see that we all want the two points as well you don't play just just to play you play to win uh, when you're in professional sport so we just keep cracking on and if we can make the games um look more like training and training's been better again this week it's felt that way one of the brief sessions we've had um, you know where it didn't right direction what's the next step in terms of progress two points mm -hmm. um, if we can see if we can get in the game compete like we did um, at the weekend but be a little bit smarter on our finishes and, and come up with less we're, we're not in a spot where we can give over cheap ball at the moment um, we, we need to protect that ball to make sure we can give give ourselves a very best chance of getting them two points. So, an improved performance, I suppose, is the next step of progress. But ultimately, we're heading towards two points. That's that's what we want, um, and hopefully, they're not too far away for us. It's interesting these next few games. Do you look at that London Broncos one as a, a bit of a marker to say, well, we're expected to win, but we need we still need to put in more at the moment. We still need that gradual improvement heading towards that game. Are we expected to win? One of them. We're, we're down there at the foot of the table with them. We shouldn't be arrogant enough to suggest oh, we're Hull FC, we should win. That's not helped us any time this year so far. So we'll treat them with the utmost respect. They're a good team. Um, they haven't had 50 stuff done them like we have um, on numerous occasions. So we have to be mindful of that. Um, but that's London in in you know, 10 days time, whatever that might be. So we're just focusing on the next training session would be good, get that one right. And then we'll, we'll go up, get on that bus, spend a few hours together and enjoy each other's company and, and get into that Warrington game. Yeah, the Warrington game is the first time you've met since round two. How difficult is it to look back on that result given the circumstances of it depleted in terms of injuries and then the sending off early doors? Yeah, it was a funny game. Um, but effort was good in that game. There was some good stuff that came out of that one. I think we've changed quite a bit. I don't think Warren have changed too much. So obviously, the, I think George Williams didn't play that game. Um, obviously, George is someone we'll, we'll play this time. Maybe a couple of changes in amongst. But I think watching Warrington, they're a dangerous team. But they're playing their way and they're backing their way and sticking at it. So I don't think we have to prepare ourselves for some freakish play. They're going to play a tough game. Um, and they've, they've changed their mindset a lot from being the pretty stuff to to putting you in them corners and making life hard for you. So it's a roll your sleeves up sort of night, play smart, otherwise it's a tough one, but definitely a challenge looking forward to. How do you think they'll approach it in light of their upcoming games? They've got Hull Cow the week after and then that big Challenge Cup semi-final. So how do you think they'll be viewing this one in light of those next two games? I was fortunate enough to play for Warrington for a time and every game is a big game at Warrington. Um, Back-to-back -back losses are a no-no. Um, any loss is a no-no, really. They've got a great roster and you know it's all set up for success. So they, there's pressure every week there and they handle it pretty well, I think, for the most part. But yeah, they won't be overlooking us thinking about resting people, changing stuff because they've got some games coming up. I think most teams have found, you know, throughout history, you look back when you, when you take your foot off a little bit and you're eye off the ball. When that big one comes up, you're probably not going to beat your best anyway. So we'll expect the best warrant. That, that you can predict really and 
and we'll try to bring our best. Sam, thank you. No worries. Very right, Simon. Um, how many SAS say? Uh, we spoke a little bit about him on Sunday. His numbers have been there since. And he played over an hour, didn't he? And 19 carries, 140 metres. It's pretty freakish for a front runner. Yeah, I probably asked too much of him, to be fair. We've been asking a lot of him <clears throat> since. <clears throat> Did he get Simbin or sent off? He got banned, didn't he? Herman, yeah. <clears throat> Since then, a lot of that, them bans that happened at the beginning, wrongly or rightly, we, we had a lot of bans, didn't we? Blocks missing, and, and Herman's played the lion's share of minutes um, for our front row since, really. Uh, it's great that he can do it. Uh, I don't think we're seeing the best of him, though. I think he was good at weekend, but I think if when we get back into a bit of a rhythm and a couple more bodies back so that middle's firmed up a little bit, um, I think we'll see more from Herman as well, but he definitely, through his actions, he's leading us and making sure he's turning up and looking after those young lads around him. But as much as he, he was good, punchy, there's definitely areas to clean up, but I think some of that comes with uh, those areas might be exposed a little bit more when you're on the field too long, which is, is on me and, and my decisions around how we spin people around. But when he's doing that good a job, you don't really want to have him off the field too long. We'll see how that goes. In terms of getting players back, obviously Jack Ashworth and people like that, and be able to balance that a little bit, maybe. Yeah, obviously Jack Ash is probably, I want to say three weeks maybe from being right for selection, whether he's ready or not, so a, a different matter. But obviously we've got Fash there and um, Cam Scott available this week means you know we could, we could use Ling in the middle and all those little bits. So I think generally when you get all the right support around the players like Herman. You know, you see the better side of him, irrespective of what it is. It could be talking about Liga, could be talking about whether it might be Sutty or ever else. But when you get the, you know, the one to seventeen, you're stronger, more experienced blokes around him. You see the better side of him, and not to take away from what our young lads have done, they've been great. But I said a couple of weeks back that it's not always the wisest decision to play all of them at the same time. So we'll spin a few of them around in the next few weeks, and they'll they'll get some opportunities in reserves to to kick on and learn from what they've they've, they've had with the first team squad and. And see if they can come back stronger from it. Not to discredit anyone that's played for Hull this year, but Tony said it as well. Haven't really seen the best of Hull in terms of what your best day, best team would be this year. But it seems right now, certainly in the next couple of weeks, you're going to get something closer to what that could be. Yeah, um, yeah, you're right, and I'm not sure. I don't know what our best uh, thirteen or seventeen is yet because we haven't seen a couple of them yet this year, and obviously there's a couple of new bodies there um, coming into play for us. So. I think over the next few weeks there'll probably be more changes. I don't know how many bodies we've used. I don't know what num I know we've got high squad numbers because we have our young lads have all got the numbers, but I don't, we must have used more than everyone else. Thirty two. Thirty two is around that. Um, yeah, so we've used plenty, haven't we? So it's been there's been plenty of change in there. And I'd like to think we're probably not there yet because there's some people deserve opportunities and there might well be more change coming um, in the coming weeks. But you know, at some point you do settle for your seventeen all being well is it obviously going to be injuries and such that come but when we get to that I do think we'll be a competitive team but we've still got quite a bit of work to do uh, not only in the physical respect to the outside stuff and the performance but the mental side of it we're, you know, we're shifting attitudes um, changing some bits about how we go about our business if you like so that doesn't happen overnight either um, but I'm, I'm confident as well as everyone in, in the room you know our, our squad of players and staff that there's there's still plenty in this group yet, the season's not dead, there's a long way to go yet. Building blocks is a term you've used already in the last two weeks, is that, is that a case or it is just small little bits of progress week by week? Yeah, I mean to go from consecutive 50s on you to, to knocking off the top teams, we're probably, if we're all honest, we're probably not quite there yet, are we? And if we try shoot too far and fail, that doesn't do great for your confidence when it's low anyway, so just try and knock off some little bits in between. and. We'll look back and we'll have made quite a bit of ground, I think, as we go along. So you spoke about defensive parity, but what were your thoughts on attack on, on Sunday's game? Because there was a lot of it, especially in Leeds' 20. Oh, well, we did some good stuff. Um, probably not composed enough at times, and our communication probably was not at the level it needs to be at. Um, and again, I think I started it off with, with it, but I said it straight after the game. We're not the team, we can't be coming up with play two, play three errors at the moment. Um, midfield, good ball, anywhere on the field to be honest um, but as I said again <clears throat> it did look a bit more like training how we practice to play and, and buying into getting a little bit repetitive about what we do and, and trying to 
expose what we've seen and what we've tried to achieve in the week um, with our opposition. So, yeah, I think we, we're getting there. And also, if we get True back in the mix, that's a natural half um, and, and a very good one as well. Let's be right. Like I said it last, last year, I think he helped the team greatly. And I'd expect the same this year, but we're not expecting it. All at the start, he's going to take a few weeks to get himself to the level that he'll be happy with and, and we'll be happy with, but step in the right direction, I think. Actually, did the stats with Shuri, 53% wins with him in the side last year and 21% without him, so what does that say? It's a big jump, in it? Yeah, well, that's last year. We're a new team as well now, aren't we? So we'll see how he goes when he comes back. I will not want to heap the pressure on him that he's not the Messiah. He's not coming in and he's going to save everyone and we're going to we're going to smash Warrington 40-0 or, you know, it's not going to happen. Um, but he's going to definitely add to our group. He's, he's a quality player and can't wait to see him back out there. He's done a lot of hard work um, to get himself where he is and he's due a bit of luck as well. So hopefully we see, we see Truy out there every week now um, for a long period to come.